Welcome back everybody. So on today's episode, we're going to continue to do work on the storm shelter. So I put a picture out on YouTube and asked y'all which color do you think that we wind up going with? A lot of people chose the top colors. We actually decided to not go with any of the top colors because it may be hard to tell on camera. They have a lot of blue in them. They weren't quite the gray color we were looking for. We wanted something a little softer. Ultimately, we wound up going with this color right here. It's kind of a good neutral in between the line color. It's not super light, but it's not super dark. And I will say we weren't against a dark gray. However, once I painted these on the other day in the sunlight and felt, wow, the temperature difference between just regular board to this dark color was amazing. I got a bit concerned that the walls may heat up in this floor to sun a lot. Although we're gonna insulate the house very well, we wanted to make for sure that this color didn't constantly keep the outside walls hot. And the reason I'm talking about the house is, I'd also mentioned the last episode, whatever paint color choice we pick for the storm shelter here is the same exact color that's gonna go on the house. We're trying to match up everything on the property. My building over here has got a hint of gray and kind of cream in it as well, which is ultimately kind of what this color looks a little like. So this is the one that we've decided we wanna go with. The good news is this is a small building. Once I paint it, if we decide that, man, we really don't like it, I'm going to get another couple gallons of paint, change the color here, and this gives us a really good idea of what the house is going to look like. So it took me about 45 minutes to get my old uh, airless sprayer primed. It is primed now, thank goodness. So we're going to try to spray. I haven't used that thing in about seven years. hope everything is cleaned out well and works well. It's a bit windy, so I'm probably going to get covered in paint, but that's okay. This is the only day I've got. I need to get this done. So the plans in this episode are to paint the outside, paint the trim, and then we'll probably go ahead and move in and start some of that electrical that everybody's been asking about. Thanks for watching. Ah, well, all the paint is dry, it's next day. Now it's time to run electrical. So I went inside and made a rough mark and grabbed some quick measurements where I think I'd like the power to come out inside. So now, the fun part, I've got to drill through cement board, then through six inches of wood to get the power in. Oh, 
Fingers crossed. I hope I don't hit any of the 10,000 nails that are in this wall. So do y'all remember the other day when I showed you that huge black wooded down in here? Yeah, me too. And uh, remember when y'all of y'all were saying, hey, you should send that to Spider Heaven and kill it and all that stuff? And uh, I didn't. And I was like, nah, that spider ain't gonna hurt nothing out here, right? Guess what I forgot about? I have to get in this hole today to do my wiring. And I have plumbing buried down here that I have to dig up and literally get in here to put new connections on. And I can't find the spider. This is going to be fun. <laughs> Not really. Oh, Charlotte. Where are you? Ha <laughs> I really wish I was joking about the Black Widow. Now, I've never tried to make this a DIY channel, but when there's something worth sharing, I'd like to share it. So as y'all can see, I just put a ring of PVC cement on this pipe and on the inside of this. Put them together, twist about a quarter of a turn, seems to get a good seal. But what's critical, this is what I wanna share, because it took me a long time to figure this out. You're actually welding these two together, melting it, making a chemical bond right here that's actually welding these two together, so to speak. But the fitting, due to all this glue in there, wants to press off. So when you put it on, hold it for a few seconds. That's how a lot of joints fail on PVCs. People twist it in, going about their business, and the joint pushes itself back off. It dang sure do it with a cap and other tight fitting pieces. Hold it for a few seconds, slight twist, stop. I've never really had a joint fail other than I got some bad glue one time, some of that clear stuff, just about every joint failed that I did. The blue stuff, that's the way to go. The rain or shine, that's the ticket. So while I'm getting this electrical ready to run aside, let's address a few concerns and questions that I get quite often on this. A lot of people look at this storm shelter because they haven't watched the build up to this point. A lot of people are new and I'm trying to get people to go back and watch this whole build series, 20 something episodes in it. This is not your typical wooden constructed structure at all. It's solid wood walls, six inches thick, wrapped, strapped, thousands of nails constructed in a way that was truly engineered. There's engineered plans that I put in a lot of these videos and it's been put into a hurricane facility and tested. Uh, they also tested it for tornado rated winds. This structure is actually rated to 250 mile an hour winds. Do I trust it to 250 mile an hour? No. But that brings us to what a lot of people are asking. Are you crazy? Why don't you have something on the ground? Well, one, this is Florida. You dig down a few feet, it's wet. High water table here. We just don't do underground bunkers in this state. Not too terribly often, unless you're really high on a hill. Two, this is Florida. Our most common tornadoes are EF zeros and EF ones. What hit us last year was an EF one, rated at 90 mile an hour winds by the National Weather Service. 
that's the most common by far. A F2 is kind of rare, but does happen. A three, you can just about forget about it. There's only a few cases in history. Fours and fives, they just really don't happen here. We don't get the big monster tornadoes like we get out west. If I lived in Oklahoma or somewhere out west, heck no, I wouldn't have this. I would have me something underground just like a lot of y'all do, no doubt. But 99% of what this is gonna get used for is tornado warnings when they pop up. We come on out early. We don't wait until tornadoes right on top of us, or we try not to. But the majority of what it'll get used for, this is Florida, hurricanes. And while hurricanes look crazy and devastating on TV and what the news portrays, and they really are, I've been through them my entire life. Having been through an actual tornado versus a hurricane, oh, I'll take hurricane any day of the week. I trust this for any hurricane we could possibly ever get. We're not directly on the coast where we're gonna get the full force winds. It's gotta come 40 to 50 miles inland before it gets here. Be a lot weaker by then. Tons of trees around us to slow the wind down, so we're good. So between weak hurricanes that we'll most likely get inland and very weak tornadoes that Florida's known for, this, this is so overbuilt, it's crazy. We're gonna do a little bit of testing down the road too, and I'm gonna show you, I'll often say it's something, we're gonna prove it. I'm gonna show you how strong this thing really is. But I just thought I'd try to put some of y'all peace with that. I know that's still not gonna be good enough for some of y'all, but underground's not happening in Florida. Just isn't happening. And yes, technically this is supposed to go on an outside all weather box, but it'll work just fine for in here. If you're curious, I'd already ran this wire last year when I ran power over to the new pole barn. And if you're curious about that, I will include that video at the end of this one. And if it makes you feel better, yes, I've killed power to everything. Here we are in the shelter. Latches 
go all the way into the wall, lock down here in these grooves I made, or you can unlock them. We're pulling air in from these vents because we have our vent fan running. So that will recirculate fresh air in here. And don't worry, I do have plans for a backup. And, oh yeah, AC. I like it. I like it a lot. Of course, light. Now my plans are to do battery backup everything. I know it's a big concern for people. I'm gonna probably put battery backup lights on the inside of the doors so as soon as you come in. You can pop one of those on. And we still have to put supplies out here, so bear with me. Well, we are pretty much done. Other than a few little minor things that I'll talk about. So the inside's cleared out, ready to go. Sadly, I left stuff on the slab when I first built this and it kind of stained it. But we're gonna get us a seven foot by seven foot area rug to put in here and uh, kind of clean the floor up. It really doesn't matter at the end of the day. It's a storm shutter and it probably will not get used much. So the plans are now we'll purchase us a futon for the backside because we do plan on staying out here overnight um, at times whenever hurricanes are coming through. And I've got to do some small things that I'll do off camera. I'm going to actually put some hooks in the wall to kind of clean the cord up and have it uh, you know, not dangling down, look a little better. But I have to leave that cord loose because I designed it to where you can unplug it, curl it up, put it right in here, and then you can drop this steel door hatch and bolt it by hand right there. So if we ever get any really bad weather, tornadoes, hurricanes, and we feel like we're at risk that this may get ripped right out, you know, we don't wanna, we don't wanna get pelted with an open hole right here. We can throw the cord in real quick, bolt that solid steel door down, and uh, we're safe. Not to mention, this is a secondary escape hatch, so if something ever blocks the door, and I know, I know, a lot of new people are looking at this going, can you fit through that? Yes, if you watch some of the older videos, I have made that cut out a couple different times and showed that I can easily fit through it. Now in the future, there'll be a fut futon here, so if we ever have to use that, you can step right up on the futon and get out. And later on, I may design something to lean against the back wall, so I don't have to drop all the way down to the ground. I can actually grab something back there. So this is still gonna be a work in progress. Our vent fan is in. I have to do a little bit of caulk and a few minor things here. It's ready to be plugged in and work. So as you can see, we've got us a little three-way outlet because eventually we're gonna store some uh, phone chargers out here, so that'll be nice. So we've got Basic power, I thought about running some extra outlets, but honestly, we don't need it. Power to run this, so this is a fan and AC. We really don't need another fan out here, but we're gonna bring my Dewalt battery powered fan out here, just in case we lose power. We've got ventilation here. We've got one basic light. Yeah, it's ugly, but this is a storm shelter. And I decided to do a old traditional bulb instead of an LED, that soft, tone probably will make this feel a little more comfortable in here instead of bright white hospital looking lights. Got a shelf here, figure we'll probably wind up putting phones and a couple bottles of water on it. A few shelves over here, we'll store some more uh, good supplies like water, uh, just a few other things. We'll put Bullet in a little doggy bed down here so if he has to ride out a storm with us. And uh, like I said, battery powered Dewalt fan will go over here. I've got battery powered lights that will store out here during a storm and I've got lots of extra batteries that could literally run those things for a couple of days. We're not going to be out here that long. Over here we'll probably put some more canned goods, food, something. Uh, but we're going to keep it pretty basic in here. Ventilation is in and working. You'll just see the fan, but actually believe it or not, you can feel air coming in if there's any sort of wind outside so it'll constantly recirculate air. And speaking of that, we plan on putting a O2 meter in here down the road. So if uh, oxygen does get low for any reason and we're in here for extended period of time, we could turn on the forced ventilation. Um, keep in mind, we can always just open the door if we need to. Just because you're in a hurricane for eight hours doesn't mean it's extremely intense. Typically, it's only intense for just a small period of time. If I've got to crack the door to put some fresh in, we, air in, we can do that. 
Another thing I'm thinking about doing is putting a deep cycle battery in here and keeping a trickle charger going to it and buying one of those cheap power inverters so we always have 110 volts in here even if we lose power. Also Dewalt makes a really nice inverter that can use all my big 5 amp hour batteries and it turns into 110 volts. So there's a couple options I'm looking at but we plan on having backup options. As far as when you first come in the door, if we were rushing in with a tornado or something and about to slam that door closed and it's going to get dark, I'm still going to mount some battery powered like push button lights right here. We have some in the camper. We really like them. So we're going to have battery backup everything out here in some way, shape or form from ventilation to air to, like I said, meters for oxygen. Somebody mentioned a carbon monoxide meter. That's a good, good choice. I may get on Amazon and get one out here as well. few other little touch-ups to do and put another coat of paint on the door I just replaced the door weather stripping on this side it wound up getting caught on the door at one point in time you can see it pulled some paint off so I've still got to do a little bit more painting uh, some more painting right here I already knew I was gonna have to come back and do that that's just over spray from when I hit this those things are boring I'll do it off camera I think I'm gonna close up some of these gaps on the end of the building here I can do that quite simple and my plan is to come back and change out the uh, ridge vent to a much much wider one because such a low pitch roof I've been concerned about water blowing up in and into the roof I'm actually going to get some of that foam weather stripping that uh, Goes underneath the ridge cap and will seal off any water that can blow in but it still allows air through And I think I'm going to get a much much wider ridge cap to really help with any potential blow in of uh, You know water down the road if we're really in a bad hurricane or something. So here's the outside paint we really really like it think it's a good choice one reason we chose this color is because it almost perfectly matches the building so we want to kind of make the house over there this shed and the building all match and kind of look like that was on purpose and we really kind of like the white trim too something else i have to do off camera finish covering up this hole probably going to do that in just a minute went ahead and ran water out here and the reason why is I mentioned the other episode I'm about to plant all my citrus, citrus trees and a few other things out here. Um, and it's gonna be nice to have water and a hose here constantly to be able to take care of them. So I made sure I ran water out to here a while back when I had to ditch which here. I've got an outlet outside. You never know when you need power for outside. Obviously it runs to inside. There's our AC. I got a little bit of touch up painting to do here. But other than that, this thing is just about ready. So yes, I know, we're still not completely done. This is probably one of the last episodes, but we're gonna have one more for sure. And that's where I'm going to actually build an attachment to go on the back of the tractor to drive those deep earth augers into the ground here that I'm gonna ultimately bolt this shelter down with. Now the shelter is sitting on a several thousand pound, eight inch thick slab. We just don't get tornadoes strong enough in Florida to blow this over. We don't get the big EF four and fives like you do out in Midwest. But just to make us feel a little better when we're in here riding out a bad storm, tornado, or hurricane, I'm gonna go ahead and put four foot earth augers in the ground, basically mobile home anchors, and then I'm gonna bolt them to the structure. Like I said, we're gonna save that for another episode because we've got a little bit of metal work to do. I'm gonna build a specialized tool that goes on the back of the tractor so it can drive them in because they're a nightmare to drive in by hand. I'm gonna use them around the property and other places, so might as well make a quick tool for the tractor. I plan on constantly using those throughout the future. So once we get to that video, and get this finalized and anchored in the ground. Hopefully by then I've done did some little minor details I just talked about, so we'll kind of do a quick update video, show you where we're at. Maybe we'll have the futon in by then, inside stage. We're gonna work on that pretty quick. Uh, other than that, it's, it's done. It's kind of been a long journey to get here, no doubt. A lot of starting it, stopping it for other things around the property. But hopefully you've enjoyed it. I know a lot of y'all are new to the channel. There's 20 some odd videos on this build series right here alone i also have a playlist so if you'd like to start back from the first day that i poured the slab all the way up to where we're at now i'd love for you to watch it because i know y'all have a lot of questions and concerns but until you watch how i built this thing you're just not going to understand how strong it is i know most people don't think of an above ground shelter and definitely don't think of wood but this has actually been truly engineered there's engineered plans i'll try to remember to put those down in the description stumbled across them a while back and this thing has been in a hurricane and tornado test facility You've been shot with two befores and all kinds of stuff that typical things have to go through testing and it passed it's easily going to pass anything we do here yes if i lived out in the midwest i would have a bunker underground florida underground doesn't work well we're too wet 
and again this should ride out any storm that we get so hopefully that puts a little bit of uh, uh some of y'all at peace there because i know you've had a lot of concerns we will do a lot of stuff inside for safety and again i will provide an update video on that and i'm always willing to listen to some of y'all's concerns and constructive criticism that's what the comment section is for drop them down there i try to read every single comment thank y'all so much for watching hopefully you've enjoyed it I really wish I was joking about the Black Widow. Ho, ho, ho! Look at him! Come on! <laughs> Apparently I dug her up and didn't realize it. Look at that old hourglass on that thing. There's that spitter. Rest in peace, girl. Rest in peace.